Hello, everyone. Kelly Wentworth here, back to talk Survivor 47, episode 11. I can't even keep track anymore, but I have a very special guest. I'm so excited, y'all. My first new era guest, and I'm going to introduce him the way he introduces himself on Cameo. Caleb from season 45. How are you? I'm so glad you're here. What up, Kelly? You know, very uh, touched and honored to be your first, and uh, hopefully we have a uh, you know a really fun time here today. You know, I think we'll have a good time. Yeah. So we we have only had a few DMs or text exchanges. I was a big fan of you during your season. I hope you know that. Okay. Even my husband, we were like, we love Caleb. Caleb is so great. We were rooting for you. When you got voted out, we were so devastated. So I feel so honored to have you here. Thank you for saying yes. A couple weeks ago, I needed a guest and you popped in and you were like, Kelly, I got you. Let's talk. And I was like, okay, I'm covered, but I'm getting you back on later. So I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for taking the time. I, I appreciate it, Kelly. You know, um, I think I can speak for so many of us who went out the first time and went home earlier than we wanted to. And now, you know, you, you're the prototypical, you're the poster child of someone who took that and made it something uh, just amazing. And so, uh, you know, thanks for giving so many people hope uh, every day when they're, uh, you know, flying home early uh, on a plane, you know? Listen, Survivor's not easy. Okay, that's what I try to tell people. Like, even if you're the first person voted out, there are so many things that factor into your Survivor experience, starting out with whatever tribe you start on. Because you... Not to make this about your season, but you did not have the easiest time out there. So <laughs> I applaud you. You made the best of it. And I'm just so glad that um, we get to catch up now. So I promise I'm going to be nice. You know, I think you maybe think that I am such a new era hater. Yeah. And I have had my moments. But this season, <laughs> I am loving. It's so fun. Can we start out by talking about our girl, Rachel? Are you a Rachel fan? So uh, it's funny, when I, before I was on the show, um, I feel like I would like pick it apart a little bit more like the players be like, oh, this is what the, this would have been the optimal move here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, and now having played it, I think I treat it more like as a sports fan. Like you just pick okay. it and then you ride with them and you're like basically <laughs> everything that they're doing, the right and the wrong. And uh, yeah, I feel like uh, Rachel's one of the people who I've been uh, really been a fan of since, you know, the, the, the very beginning. Uh, uh, she's moving and grooving. This is like a big come up for her, you know, these last. I know. And honestly, Genevieve's talking about how she's like, oh, like once you get this, this, this stink of target on you, it's so hard to take off. And Rachel somehow did it. Like they were looking at her at the beginning and how is she just like in every alliance and every conversation right now, you know? I'm th I was thinking the same thing. I was watching and not only does she have an idol. She went to, which we'll get into more of this, but she went and did that advantage, you know, whatever, the, the, the journey with the advantage. She was in conversations with people, like people were coming to her, Genevieve was coming to her. She had a conversation with Teeny and Andy. She had a conversation with Sue and Caroline. I was like, this girl is in the middle of everything. I can't, and she was a target. How has she done it? She's incredible. I am obsessed with her. Fangirl to the max. My dog is having, my dog is also a fangirl. Look at him back there. What are you doing? No, what are you, that's no, kind of no. Thing, you know, it's just like, uh, you know, I don't know how these, uh, how contentious these podcasts are supposed to go. It's like, let's wrestle. Let's, let's see what <laughs> he was. He got excited. I started talking about Rachel and he got very excited. He's in the back like, yes, yeah. Rachel. Um, yeah, but wow. I'm just so impressed with her. I'm so happy we got to see Rachel on our screens for so long because for a hot minute there on that tribal council where Saul saved her. We could have been robbed of an end game with Rachel. You know, it's, you know, that's Survivor obviously is leaning more heavily into a lot of these quits and you're losing votes and all this sort of stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, how tough is that? Can you imagine Rachel? Like she just ends up with all of the Tukus and would have won oh. all, all of this game to play. And it really like, there is like still a thing of being swap screwed a little bit. And uh, I'm there just, is like this light from the heavens in Saul. Of course it's Saul too, right? Yes. One more good thing he did on this season. We love Saul. Are you a Saul fan? Always love, love the Saul fan. Uh, I definitely, uh, you know, uh, uh, anyone who can deal with like the real crazy of Survivor, you know, uh, shout out to Rome. <laughs> oh, Rome. Oh, Bless his heart. You know, it's like everyone is like, I wish I could do more of that in those type of conversations, you know? 
Yeah, I felt like Saul was such a good player. I know he's on the jury now. And so I'm glad we at least get to see his jury fit because listen, he's giving. I am loving Saul. I'm like, yes, I'm so glad you're still here. But Saul was such a great player in my mind. I said it every episode, like his ability to just remain calm and just let it roll off his back and just keep going and not blow up because you are deprived of everything. As you know, I mean, you're not eating, you're not sleeping, you're mentally drained, you're physically drained. And so for him to be able to just stay so chill and just get to the next day is such a skill that I don't think people understand. It's so hard to not lose your shit out there. So I was like, damn, this man is a treasure. (laughs) <laughs> you know, with me looking at Saul, and I, I don't mean this in a negative way necessarily, but I wouldn't have called him like a great player on season 47, right? That's fair. Like, if you look at like, just like the pure resume of it all, it's like he was always like, his number one allies were getting voted off. He was always kind of on the bottom of the numbers. But the thing about him that I think I appreciate is he has all the soft skills. Of somebody yes. Who's skill. Yes. Yes. Like, uh, pan out that way for the guy, but he has like every kind of like nuance. He knows how to communicate, you know, he knows how to get his point across. He knows when to kind of tone it back. Um, it just, uh, yeah, that, that, that would be like the difference how I would put it all. Yeah, I think that's a really good way. You said it perfectly. I don't think we had a chance to see like good gameplay from him, but I think in terms of social game, I thought he was really good just in the way that he was able to stay composed and um, work through tough situations and still have good relationships, I suppose. Um, and he went out in a blaze of glory. So there we go. Right, yeah. Now he's off looking fly on the on the jury, like I said. So Saul, I love you. You know, if I was going to do one last thing, I've ran into Saul uh, outside of, uh, you know, watching him on my TV. And this guy has looks for days, you know? Really? Tell me more. <laughs> I appreciate someone with a really good style. And... I'm almost sitting here like, uh, what comes next after the vest? You know, I'm <laughs> seeing some needles. I don't know. Uh, I know you didn't really have like the whole like hang out in the jury for two weeks or whatever it is like I did. Right. But I, I only packed like I only sent them like three or four things, whatever the minimum was. Because I was like, I'm not going to do Confidence. So uh, I feel like I wonder if that if Saul's packed light as well. It's like I'm always curious how people are doing it now in hindsight, you know? It's so true. Yeah, that's something we never talk about. When you go on Survivor, you have your wardrobe for in the game, but then they also tell you to bring X amount of items in case you're on the jury. And it sounds like, Caleb, you thought, well, no, I'm going all the way to the end, so I don't need many things. And then people end up kind of swapping clothes, and it has to be approved. It can't have, it can't be too white or too black, or it has to, like, even if you wear a hat, I remember War Dog wanted to wear a hat every tribal council. And they were like, no. And he's like, no, I'm doing it. And they said, no. And he goes, no, but I'm doing it. So it's just very funny. Just the whole little game we have to play. Yeah. And then they're disqualifying stuff. It's like, oh, that has, like, mirrors. So you can't, like, yes. it. It's bounce off the light. So, yes. Yeah. That's exactly. <laughs> oh, so you don't like the things I brought. Okay. Come on. <laughs> You're right. You're like, weren't these approved already? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's so funny. All those little things. Um, But okay, so we are fans of Rachel. I was also kind of laughing when they were choosing who was going to be going on the, uh, we'll call it an adventure or a journey. And she didn't even really want to do it. She was like, "Eh, I want, I don't, I want to block other people from doing it basically, which, okay, I like that. And then of course, the way that fate would work she gets to go. Did you like this journey? I guess just the fact that she was going and it's on a barge and it's basically moving all these balls into one slot. So they're each like a color in each slot and you have a time timer, but it's just the rope falling into the water. So there's a stress of hearing that. Did you like this? Okay. I loved how it was done. Uh, okay. Before we get into the, 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 the challenge itself, it was, uh, okay. it, 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 to me, like her, saying like, I'll jump in here. It almost, and being the only person of the entire tribe, it almost speaks to me like how clear there's like almost no real alliances right now. Because if you're in a five person alliance, every single person's like, oh, two people who we're going after are about to go on the journey. We should all put ourselves in a limited okay. So the fact that Rachel was like, okay, nobody, can okay, I swear on this thing? Or... <laughs> what? Are you allowed to swear here or? Yeah, you can say whatever you want. Yeah, okay. there's no rules here. 
Yeah. Kayla, be, you're free to be whoever you need to be. Yeah. Say what you want. Speak your mind. She's like, fuck, like, we can't have this happen. And she was the one who raised her hand and it worked out great for her. Um, but it, like, that's what it screamed to me. It's like, if you're in a, if you have a majority alliance at this point in the game, everyone should be putting their hands in the bag to be able to, to stop that from happening. So glad they had Rachel. The challenge itself, love the challenge. Uh, just because I think like the best of these challenges are the ones where people can be like, oh, I could do this at home. Like, you know, you think you could do it. Mm -hmm. And the, and the stress of the balls, uh, uh, and, and doing it. Do you think that it was actually that close as they showed it on the show? I always wonder that because we know being out there, I, I don't know if you had this on your season at all, but there were certain times where I was watching an episode from my seasons and I'd say, oh, it wasn't that close or that didn't quite happen that way. Or it wasn't as close of a call getting an idol or something. So I did wonder, but it, she did seem very stressed. So I think it was pretty close, maybe not down to the two seconds, but I think she probably went through a couple of those rope spools before before she got it yeah i think uh, you know i think they do a better job of this nowadays than they do back in the day uh, I, I can't relate too much lulu was so bad they couldn't even end it. <laughs> running you know so it was like uh, yeah we're talking about putting us in the deep freeze the whole time so um, yeah but uh, uh yeah it was a it was a great challenge and honestly the fact that she got a block of vote I feel like that this must be like the go-to lie in future seasons. It's like if you go on a journey at post merge or anytime, it's like a block of vote is maybe the least intimidating thing that you can say you came back with. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, she had to come back. She, I don't think now that everyone knows what happens at journeys, that mystery is taken away. So I've always been the person that says, if you get an advantage or an idol, don't tell anyone But the game has changed. Now you can't do that because she can't go and say, Oh, it was just this, or I, I guess she could say I got to choose something, but I don't think people believe that now. So I think that in terms of what she did and the way she told people, I think was great because there's always going to be skepticism about what people are telling you about what happened. And I do think that the block of vote does seem like the least, <sighs> I think it's still something to be scared of, but there's ways to navigate around it. It's not like an idol. Um, so I, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Um, I think so. Um, it is, uh, yeah, the, the, the block of votes, uh, an interesting one now that we get into seven and, and, and six. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I just think, uh, like if I'm Carolyn, I'm, I'm feeling like, okay, even 1% getting her threat level up, but like, no one's like, oh, we got to take out Rachel at eight because she has a block of vote. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, exactly. Versus an idol or something, or if she had multiple votes or i'm trying to think of what like what are all the advantages survivors had so many yeah safety without power uh yeah knowledge yeah. knowledge uh knowledge is power uh, yes burn yeah. it no and then the thing about like telling people like i'm with you at least with an idol you try not to tell anybody right yeah um but it is hard on these journeys because everybody knows like nobody's everybody. yeah have you did you go on a journey um did i go on a journey i went on one journey where i okay uh, to the Reba camp. Sometimes. <laughs> oh, okay. So you never had to go to the the big mountain, as I call it. Yeah, no. no. Okay. Okay. Uh, did, okay. Did, is that where they did Edge of Extinction? Are you familiar with it a lot? Or? Uh, I Edge of Extinction was hell. I don't really know where they did Edge of Extinction. Um, but it felt like every day on the edge was going to a journey because we, in order for us to get our daily rice, we had to... I mean, I would say like scale a mountain, basically, yeah. just to get this much. I mean, you don't even get rice now. I know. Yeah. I get it. I, get it. I don't even know about these first world problems. <laughs> <laughs> I, to... I know y'all don't even get rice till like day 10, but. Day <laughs> 15. Yeah. Is it 15? How do you feel about that? About, about Survivor not giving rice? Do you think, like, because let me tell you my perspective first. Okay. I, I just don't think it affects the game the way that maybe production wanted it to, because I know, especially in 41, because I'm friends with Ricard. And so when Ricard came back, he was like, this was like a casino game. It's not survivor anymore. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? And I think it has evolved a bit through new era. Like I think 41 was their big test. Um, and it's, it has changed now, which is good. But for me as a player and as a viewer of the show, 
I just think like, just give the rice. I don't think taking the rice away is really changing the way I watch the show. I don't think it's like, I don't find joy in seeing people just starve for no reason. Maybe I'm not doing a good job of explaining it, but I feel like just give the rice. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's meant to be like a balance. Right. The fact that they pulled back on the days. And so like day 12 on a new era season is going to be much harder than day 12 of a old era season because they're trying to figure out ways to, to balance it. Um, sure. You know, being out there, I think uh, you kind of forget about how hungry you are at some point, you know, and you don't need to, like, I was not That's like, oh, I need food at this point, but I think I had the, there are ramifications if you don't eat long enough to like your digestion and your like all your system if you don't eat for a bunch of the days. And so um, that's some there there is consequences to that. But in the moment, it didn't feel as bad. You do get like a little bit of a space cadet syndrome when you're like in confessionals and they ask you a question and halfway through your answer, you forget the question, you know, but isn't that the worst? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you think you're half of my confessionals. I didn't even remember I said that it aired on TV and I was like, I don't didn't even remember having that conversation yeah yeah i get a couple like <laughs> next question like i try to answer yeah. three times and like forget it you know we got to do something else you know? i can't process this right now that's what makes it so hard when you're trying to do numbers or vote splits or you know i know people sometimes with me i'll be like why on that vote where it was five if you had voted one for tasha and then it, and i'm like y'all i can't that <laughs> i appreciate the fact that you have thought this out for me after it's already happened, totally. when you're in that moment and you have not been eating and you have been, I mean, it's numbers every single day yeah. and alliances are changing. It's so much easier it's when you're watching. You zoom out and looking back and then you're like, oh, I guess I could have yes. said this and I, I forgot I knew that. And you just look back on it completely differently. Yeah, uh, it's, you do the best you can in the yeah. moment. And that's why it's lucky to have like some allies to bounce numbers and ideas off of, you know, if you yeah. trust people so much. Um, you know, uh, well, and yeah. sometimes Caleb, you have an ally like Andy who, yeah. uh, is giving data and, um, I did that. Okay. I'm not a math girl. I'm not a numbers girl, but Caroline said, no, no, honey, <laughs> that is not, that's not correct. So whose side are you on here? Was Andy correct in his 6% probability that Kyle would win every one? I don't even know. Yeah, or so, are you on Team Caroline? Who is right here? I, I think, okay, so Andy's math was basically that Kyle has a 50-50 chance of winning. Even of those eight of us were saying he has a 50-50 chance every way to throw. Um, so 50% okay. times 50% times 50% times 50% equals 6%, right? And he's basically, that's how he's looking at it. Oh, my Lord. Are you, do you, are you, do you like math? I, I, I'm familiar with it, but... <laughs> I need my calculator. Do we like? Do we think that fifty percent is accurate? Like, if I Joe, mean, I guess. No, I, and I'm not saying that Kyle is Joe, but is does Joe have a greater than fifty percent chance of winning any challenge? It's probably like eighty percent. Oh, I mean, Joe is at like eighty or ninety percent. Ninety percent. Okay, so I just feel yeah. like. Andy maybe was right in the idea of like, you could probably figure out a mathematical way to do it. I don't think his, the numbers he plugged into the equation, was I think that was the problem, you know? I think he has a 50-50 chance of winning out is closer to it than 50-50 chance or 6% chance of winning out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I think the question too is, even if he wins, are, are we assuming that Kyle is a threat to win at the end? Because that's what I would be thinking about at this point is... Do we, just because you win a bunch of immunities doesn't mean that is what people are looking at as the word and the winner of Survivor. Yeah. So I understand it, but I also feel like Kyle was making great points at Tribal Council saying, yes, I've won immunities, but I may not have the best social game. I may not have the best strategic game. And I think he was correct because at least from what I've seen, the only thing Kyle brought to the table was strength. And that's, I'm not trying to be shady. It's just, that, that's just what the show told me. I think he said at one point in the episode, which cracked me up. It, what he did was, he say? He was like, after he lost, he's like, all right, so I lost the challenge. I guess I'm going to have to try this social game. <laughs> <laughs> did say that. <laughs> what, I don't even know what day it is. Like, day 17, 18? <laughs> it's crazy. You know? It's crazy. 
It really is. That's a very Joe Anglum type response, though, because I do think there have been there was at least one uh, confessional where Joe said a very similar thing of like, oh, well, I don't have a necklace. So now I'm going to have to rely on these relationships I've built type of thing, you know, same concept. And it's like, oh, OK, <laughs> yeah, I think right. uh, so. I, I think in that sense, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I don't know how that like maybe that's that's the way he wins it's funniest to me that i imagine like the only way that cal could win with that strategy is almost like if he brings sue with him to the end because sue is yeah. like the person who's so after him would have never voted for him tried to poison the jury you know it's like that like it's mad it's like it's like if they brought bruce Couture all the way to the very end <laughs> i would love to see it but unfortunately <laughs> you know, sue, sue got him this time she got him did you see her eye rolls at tribal yeah Oh, she was not having it. She's like, I'm sick of this shit. This man doesn't even know what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what Sue's next move is. Um, you know, from here now, it's like you got off the big bad wolf. It's like now. It's like are we? Are and and I want to preface this by saying I I have enjoyed watching Sue. I think she's been such a who. No one I would have rather had get the paint idol. I mean, the whole thing is hilarious. I don't know what she's doing with the the mud on her face, or I don't know what's happening there. The age thing. I mean, holy shit. So funny all season. But what is Sue doing? Night. And it's still dirty. I don't know. It's I gotta... still there. What? Caleb, what's going on? I should get it freshened up. It's crazy. <laughs> I don't get it. But I but I don't know from a game, like game-wise, what what has Sue done? Yeah. I think that Sue could be that person who gets to the end with zero votes at this point. Yeah. I think um, so, too. You know, yeah, I don't even know really what her pivots are because it looks like her closest people right now are um, Carolyn and and uh, and Rachel, right? Yeah. Coming into this, and it's like there's no world that she beats either of those two. I feel like at the end, I don't know who Sue beats at the end. Again, I'm not trying to be shady. I just I'm genuinely looking at the board and I'm going, I I don't know okay. who Sue can beat at the end. I don't want to be shady either. Either. But... <laughs> The person who comes to mind with me where I'm just not sure if it's going to go well or not is Andy. Yes. Thank you. We have to talk about Andy. You know. Andy. Very confusing to me because I believe that Andy has convinced himself. <laughs> and I like. No, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I like Andy. I want to stop right now. I like Andy. I've, I thought Andy's journey has been wild what a ride we've been on okay and i'm i'm here for it yeah, from that, entertainment oh probably like you know since joe maybe, you know yeah i mean listen i, I but i just don't because every confessional we see is andy basically telling us the audience about all the shit he's doing and all these moves and it's like that's great i'm glad you think that but then in the next scene we see Genevieve talking about how he's basically the one they're just dragging to the end. Mm -hmm. And it's like, Oh, Andy, sweetie. Uh, yeah. I, I don't think if he gets to the end, I think he's going to be extremely disappointed. He even said, Caleb, hold on. He made a comment. He said something like, um, these people don't even see the moves that I'm making. <laughs> Andy, honey, how are you going to win? Yeah. How are you going to win? It's, Explain it to me. It's, it's, it's <laughs> the other thing as well that I think is really hard that he flipped on Sierra and she's the first person of the jury. And, mm. you know, it looks like she hates his guts, right? Oh my God, she's, she does not like him. I don't know, she's better. And you know what? This is like the, the new era. It's like bringing back, like, you're, you're allowed <laughs> to like, hate people again or not like them. And uh, I think that she, like, it, will have no problem letting him know that if he makes it to the end. I kind of want to see it. But yeah, Andy's one person where it's like he talks about the game, he knows it so well. So in some ways, you know, he can make it look like he's doing a lot. And he, he probably is doing a lot more. Um, but I just don't know how other people are under, understanding it out there. Right. And that's kind of the most important thing that you have to get across at the end of the day. Um, so he could come across and like take off, you know, the headband and shake out his hair at Final Tribal and let them in on his master plan. But I think it's going to be hard for people to believe. Um, it may be hard. And that's the thing I don't understand right now. I completely agree with you because the way that it appears to be, they just are kind of looking at him as this kind of like slimy little weasel. 
Like they're not looking at him as, oh, these are like brilliant game moves and I got got by this person. It's just not coming across that way, especially from Sierra, you pointed out. She seems to be the most wanting to just wreck him. Yep. And she's the mayor. Is would she still be called the mayor of Ponderosa? Yeah. The mayor of Ponderosa. Queen. You know about that, right? <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of a good no, I mean listen. If you're going to go out on the jury, it's kind of a good spot because it's it's very powerful. It is. Because I know Cass. We were always like, Cass is like the perfect mayor of Ponderosa. <laughs> like, you really set the tone uh-huh. for the jury coming in. Yeah, it's true. I think uh, – and she's – it seems like a very big fan as well. Um, you know, like, when I was – out as a, as a fellow mayor, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, band together. My, my time in office, right? <laughs> like, to me, I was very focused on wanting to make sure – like, to me, if you're playing Survivor and you – lose you have like there's some uh uh some things that would make you feel a little bit better about that like okay if we had a really great season you'd feel better about it and a great season yes. needs to have a great winner so it's really like okay guys let's try and find and hopefully get a really good winner of this thing and if we do like we're gonna have a better experience looking at this, you know you get it though yeah. that's a great way to put it because not every season gets that yeah. And so there is, I wonder on your season, did you guys as a group have a conversation about whether or not you thought your season would be a good one? Um, Like in the moment, like in the jury or like, you mean after or what? Did- like after, like, did you think like, okay, like people, like this is going to be a good season based on what happened, based on the winner, based on your amazing no votes count. I mean, moments like that add to a season and I think sometimes there are seasons, like I, between my seasons, I knew 31 was a good season. I knew production loved it. I knew like that was going to be a home run. Mm-hmm. 38, questionable because <laughs> of the theme. No, I'm being honest because of the theme and because of the winner, yeah. we all knew questionable if it was going to be a good season. Totally. Yeah. I mean, like in our season, I think um, there was mostly like, I was always very positive on our season. Mostly because I lived blue blue days, and I was like, "You guys, this is this is premier, just gonna be perfect, right?" So if the first half is good, that's a good sign, and the end game was good. And I think there was a little bit of like, okay, once Reba kind of got control in the middle, is that gonna look good? You know, that was kind of like where people would worry. But we had a lot of great characters in our season, and we had you know like the showman, and we had this, you know, you had all these little things. That you feel like that's gotta be good, right? <laughs> yeah. I always thought it would be a good season um, in, in the moment and after. But I know people like Drew was like, I don't know, man. I'm like, you know, this is how it probably like, you know, uh, we'll look in hindsight uh, from a gameplay perspective. But, you know, it was. Okay. Good- so you did, you did talk about it a little bit. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're, sort we're, of. We're kumbaya season. We still talk to each other. I think 47 is very similar to us. We're not 46. <laughs> oh, yeah. Spicy. I would even say 45. Four fell apart a little bit. Yeah, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, Listen, I have no room to talk because I only I talk to very few people from my seasons, mostly because I live. Well, you live in Vancouver, right? So it's good that you're so close with people because in Seattle, I'm just so far away from everyone. You know, everyone on the East Coast, right? You've got Philly, Boston, New York, Jersey. I mean, they can all see each other so much easier. Even Florida, like that entire just East Coast. So, so many events and things. Yes. <laughs> invited to them and free drinks and da-da, you know? Exactly. Exactly. So it's just hard, I think, not if you're in LA, but if you're anywhere else on the West Coast, sometimes it can be a little difficult. Even like Dallas, there's a lot of people that are in like Dallas, Houston area. So we're off on a little island out here. But anyway, I'm glad y'all are close. That's so cute. I see that, yeah, you guys still do things together. I love that. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's the the postseason glow, glow, you know, we're like still humming, right? Uh, you're still buzzing off it still riding that high that's good yeah. 45 yeah. was a great season though i really like 45 i actually think the last three seasons have been good the, four, the early 40s was a little bit of a struggle there a little 40. bit of a struggle yeah 41 43 oh oh brutal not to say i don't like the cast or anything but just just in general just the way the show what they were doing with it was not yeah they've kind of gotten into a rhythm now which i'm i'm glad i'm glad they about especially you know? Yeah, especially heading into 50. A lot of chatter about that. So speaking of, no and nothing, no secrets, but would you would you go would you go back to Survivor if asked? Let's ask that question. Let me ask a different question. Oh Who, Lord. Okay. Who wouldn't go back. 
if they were called, you know, especially in the 40s. Uh, didn't Emily from your season say she wouldn't go back? Yeah, she did. You think and that's she, just talk? And then if the call comes, it's like a different conversation. It's always going to be a different conversation if the call comes. But yeah. I would say that if there's one person who I actually believe is just about, you know, I don't want to say crazy, but just about enough to, uh, to <laughs> you know, it might be Emily Flipman. That might be your one. I would love to see Emily again. I would love to see you again. There's actually a lot of people I would love. I would love to see again um, from New Era for sure. I think there have been a lot of really fun characters, so it, I, I would be happy to see you again. So I hope that you would play again if you were asked, whether for fifty or in the future. It'd be great to see you. You were very, very fun. Can't tell, but I'm blushing. Second of all, okay. You know, maybe we'll. Okay. I don't know how back far back fifty is going. You know, maybe even maybe even yourself. <laughs> I don't know. We don't spill secrets on here. We just talk in very vague uh, conversations. <laughs> well, speaking of, uh, there's one person on this season who, uh, so I feel like the last couple of seasons uh, since 45, I have like this thing where it's like, like, how do they keep getting away with this? Like how like okay. they keep breaking bad? Just like these people who, you know, are playing a good game and at the same time are getting no heat whatsoever. And it ultimately, a lot of that is like due to like their game. Like Charlie was kind of like that last season. Like, you know, he was going and going. It's like, how is nobody looking at this guy, you know? And um, my person this season for that is Carolyn. Okay, I'm glad you brought her up. Did, she, are we... I, I, could she be the winner? <laughs> Can I go that far? Can I say that? I think she could be. I uh, I definitely think she'd be like a... Like, she has low visibility right now, but it's in this new era. You always just need to peak at the right time. But she's kind of positioned herself... Coming into that, I think her biggest worry right now is probably Genevieve being like, I am a huge target. Who can I put the the target on? Maybe like the pair of Sue and Carolyn, right? But outside of that, like the pre-merge was never a target. And since the merge, Rachel's name's been said, Genevieve, Andy, Sue, uh, you know, Kyle, Sam, like everybody. I'm, I don't think I've ever heard Carolyn's name be said as a target yet. No. Like, how is this happening? <laughs> yeah. Do you think people don't believe she's a threat or she's just played that kind of middle game so well that she's going to start to knock off all these bigger pieces and she's going to be basically the best option left at the end? Is that a possibility? Yeah, I think that she comes across as unintimidating, like as a first impression. I also think she has enough like kind of game awareness to not also put herself on people's radars either. And all that she's been doing is just like figuring out who her people are and kind of building that together. You know, it, it's kind of like Andy in the sense that, okay, now, like, how are you going to play these last few games? And you have to make a decision. You can't just continue to leave every door, right? You have to figure out who you're going to go with and like run with those people to the end. And so she needs to make the right decisions. And if she does, she has a great chance to win. And if not, she'll look back and be like, oh, like this was the, like this, these were the moments that I could have done something different. You know what I mean? Survivor regret is real. Yeah. <laughs> so everyone has something. I thought she had a little bit of a breakthrough episode just in terms of them showing that confessional, talking about the ADHD. I mean, not everyone get those like personal confessionals you have to pay attention to because they don't give those to everybody. So I know we got one from Teeny last week. We got one from um, Caroline this week. And so it's like, yeah, you just kind of, you know, why are we getting that now? And you're right. She's been a little bit more of a slow burn. But if I look back throughout the season, she has done these little moves that are actually really good. Even like keeping Sue's idol a secret. She's There was something she did when they had that sanctuary reward where multiple people went from different tribes. And she, she I think she went back with the information to Sue or something. There's just these little things she's done. And I've seen a lot of people online are like, who? Who is that? And I'm like, Maybe I'm looking at it a little bit differently, but I don't know. I think I think she's actually been really creative and and good with her gameplay, just social game, and also she's kind of emerging now, making moves. So I'm curious to see, like you said, what her next moves are, and does that place her in a good position to potentially win? Yeah, I think um, you know we're coming across very glass half full on yeah. her in terms of like the opportunity and like assuming like. She this isn't she doesn't didn't just fall backwards into this position but she's actively doing things and there's small things that we can point to for that um and yeah she's she's my can't like how does she keep getting to this person right yeah now? yeah 
who could you see winning at this point? It's a very interesting group left because we haven't talked about the dynamics, but we basically have, you're right, not really a lot of close alliances anymore because like Saul was knocked out from Teeny and then Sierra was knocked away from Sam. And then um, now Gabe and Kyle have been, well, I guess Kyle, I don't know what he was doing, but Gabe from Sue. Like it's very interesting how these people have been kind of voted out away from their number ones. And so we have this group of uh, people who have nowhere to go band together, the five people, which leaves the three on the outside. But I was looking at the board last night going, I actually don't, uh, the only person I could see edit wise winning right now is Rachel. So is that too obvious? So then who else do we think could win? Because it's, it's kind of wide open at this point. So I told you earlier that I'm I, I, I'm basically just a sportsman at this point. Right? Okay. Unless I give it to you, unless we're talking, I'm talking football, uh, basketball, hockey, whatever you want to talk about, we'll we'll go that way. Genevieve, man, like of course she could win this thing. Well, yeah, she could. You're right. Yeah, she's got an uphill battle. Major uphill battle. Yeah. Major, major uphill battle, and you know, I it, it's hard to see the path ahead for her at some points, but you know, even not, not that we're going to read too much into the preview, but she's making fake idols. Like, is anyone playing harder than Genevieve right now? Um, I actually have a question for you about what Genevieve proposed to Rachel uh, okay. about this idea is like, Hey, we need to get rid of the people that everyone wants to take to the end. Um, okay. What do you think about that proposal? Do you think that's like, this is a really smart strategy. I should entertain this if I'm Rachel in this like more dominant position. Or do you think it's, um, you know, this is the most suspicious thing. Of course I'm taking these people to the end. Like I am in the power position here. I have an idol. I have this. I have that. Like I can take these people to the end. I'm not you. Yeah. I think that Rachel was just entertaining that. I, I, it's a tough spot because it depends how Rachel views herself and these other people. So I had a similar situation in season 31 where everyone was looking at like Keith and Abby. Who else? I think it was primarily Keith and Abby. I think that Tasha had the conversation. Maybe it was Spencer. I don't even know. My was memory it? is horrible. I don't know. But it was basically like, let's get these goats. I think it was Tasha. It was like, let's get these goats out of here is what she was saying because they're going to take the spot. And that's essentially what Genevieve is saying. <laughs> um, I think in Rachel's position... I would stick with the group that she's with, especially because she does have these tools in her toolbox. I mean, she has a secret idol. So now she's at eight. She wins immunity. She's yeah. guaranteed at seven. Now she's got the idol guaranteed to six. She's got this vote. I mean, I'm thinking probably at least she's good to five. Right. With the group that she has. And so I guess the, the, the fine line is where does Rachel become that final big target? Like if she's in that five, like if they knock off Genevieve and Kyle and Sam and there's five left and she has no weapons remaining, is she then the last person in that spot to get booted? So that's where you have to weigh the pros and cons of, of each of these groups. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Um, what would you do in Rachel's position? It's funny. I feel like on paper... You want to take out the people who are, and you know, who are we to say, but like the goats, at least how, how Genevieve puts it, right? Yeah. On paper, that makes total sense. But at the same time, I feel like you just kind of, especially at that point in the game, you kind of just have to go with whoever you actually trust the most, because that's the thing that'll get you through. So if you feel like you actually can rely on these people, she's in like three different alliances with them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. She's, yeah, she's in a good spot. Way to people who actually would have her back versus people where it's like, yeah, pragmatically, you'll vote with me this time, but you're, you're going to spin on me in a vote or two as quickly as you can. That's not going to get me anywhere. I, right. So I think you kind of, I think she did make the right decision, but it's tough because on paper, what Genevieve's proposing makes total sense, you know, it and does. you still want to do that. Um, that's, yeah, I, I think she made the right move, but it, it, who, we'll know, we'll know soon. <laughs> We'll know soon, but I do think she's doing a good job of keeping the so-called goats yeah. in in good favor with her. Like she she did this thing with Sue where she told Sue the truth about her advantage and she must know Sue well enough to know, oh, this is going to be really good. And we saw Sue was like, oh yeah, I, I completely trust her now. Yeah. What? <laughs> Just went back? 
I mean, that like that's amazing gameplay on Rachel's part to be able to um, understand the way different players need you to treat them. <laughs> because Survivor is not about, really, is not about what you want. It's about playing to everybody else that's out there with you. And like, what does this person need? How are they going to feel comfortable? It's not going to be the same thing as it is for this person. Yeah. So that's like a really good survivor player is able to like understand each individual person and their role in that person's game. If you can't do that, Rome, <laughs> no offense. <laughs> I think you're great. You're never going to make it. Yeah. You can't um, be that selfish. Like you, you, there's a time and place. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah I, I completely agree. And uh, that was probably like the part that was missing, I think, for the Genevieve's proposal was probably just, you know, not like this, like short term, let's do this for this vote and we'll figure it out from there. Because that's basically how Genevieve's moving at this point. She's like, she goes week to yeah. week, well, that's all she can offer. But like, it's okay, this has to be like our group. And like, maybe we could take this group into the next stage. And what do you think about that? Which even then, I think it probably falls on deaf ears. But that's probably the piece that maybe like would have made it a little bit more compelling than just like a, a one-off um, offer, which I mean, Tony would have taken that, right? Tony was always flipping over, flipping the bottom and flipping back. So, you know, but who's, who's Tony in this life? You know? Who's Tony? Yeah. Listen, I cannot believe that man won twice. I will say like, I know everyone says Sanders the greatest ever play and she is amazing. But I, like to me, Tony, so be Tony, because of his chaotic nature, I think, I, I, I think he has to be the best, ever, one of the best to ever play. Yeah. How yeah. do you do that twice? It, it's against like, all winners caleb the <laughs> second season is people that know like have literally won yeah i mean crazy you know what? um you he there was a there's a little bit of uh like you know he had the right people on the same season in terms of like having like a number one that you could ultimately 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 trust and like you know they talk about like the tightest pair the tightest trio the tri tightest four is the one that's going to get to the end and um, unfortunately, yeah, I mean, like they had by far, and I think Sarah's probably one of the more underrated people, um, you know, yeah. of all the players in the show. So like those two together, it's just, you know, what a, what a team, you know? I and agree with you. Love, yeah. Love, love Tony. I mean, I think Sarah Lucina is, yeah. Says that Tony's not the greatest player now. I think even Ron would say Tony's the best now. You know what I mean? He's from Boston. He loves championships. That's, of course he's going to say <laughs> Back to your sports talk. <laughs> Wait, what sports do you tune into? Are you a football guy? Are you a hockey guy? You're in up, Canada, so. I grew up on basketball, NBA. Oh, you did? Okay. And I also uh, picked up NFL kind of more in like my college years. Because uh, okay. football is not that big in Canada. So you kind of have to, you know, you, you pick it up from friends. At least, at least I did, right? Um, so I'm like, I think like an auxiliary, like, like Seahawks is like my number one team. Just basically. <gasps> proximity wait right? is it really it is i but didn't know this I, I just feel like i'm a later fan so i don't feel like i have like it, the merch is not everywhere in the windows and you know what i mean and so it's like i'm not like steeped in the culture as much but okay. you know those are the games that i watch for sure I mean, do you have a jersey yes okay yeah. who's your, who who's your jersey i mean i got i got i got dk right now you know oh yeah okay great right but now. you have well you have multiple jerseys I do actually. I always buy uh, uh, jerseys like for fantasy football as well. Which, by the way, is okay. there a Survivor Fantasy team somewhere? So I've played Survivor Fantasy. There's a an app called Bracketology. Okay. And they basically like they have it all. Fit, like they have three different types of games, and you just sign up, and then you can play all season. So you can play like I've played in a, a big pool with fans. There's a separate Survivor one. But I don't know if people, like, I don't know how much people are into it, but it, it is really fun. We have a survivor one. There's only like 10 people in it because I don't think people knew about it. So we can get the word out next season and do like a big one. Do you, no, oh, you're not yeah. into that? I'm, I'm very game. Okay. Okay. No, I said I'm very game. Sorry, you froze there for a second. Yeah. I'm, oh, okay. You know, I'm okay. 10 toes down. Yeah. I love, okay, good. Uh, I love betting on like, uh, you know, sports. And now it's like, it makes sense to start betting on survivor a little bit. You know? You do sports betting? I do. Okay. My husband does too. And I, I don't know half the time what he's talking about. He's like talking about, so, like, what's a, what's a parlay? Yeah, you know. What's you're, that? It's like uh, you're betting on multiple things ha all happening at the same time. Like my favorite my favorite kind of go-to parlay these days is uh, uh, it's Pittsburgh to uh, the Steelers to lose the first half, but then to win the game. That crushes. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
I also do that with the Chiefs a little bit as well because the Chiefs, for some reason, they're always down and then they win. And uh-huh. those two bets are always kind of uh, like quick go tos where you can make some money. That's free. That's free for this whole. The, if you're listening to the edge. You're welcome. You know. Listen, we're we're trying to help people out here. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's <laughs> other ways to win a million. You know. <laughs> yeah. Or lose it. It's fine. Yeah. We are not supporting any sort of. <laughs> you get more responsibility, but you can't lose. <laughs> Do what you want. Okay, we're not telling you what to do with your money, but we're saying that you could, listen, yeah. giving you options, all right? <laughs> yeah. Or invest in stocks. I don't know. Listen, I, I can't I can't be telling you what to do. Um, I didn't know you were a big Seahawks fan, so that makes me happy because, you know, I'm a Seahawks fan. I grew up watching football, so big Seahawks fan. Okay. But even you- though you haven't watched forever, we'll, we'll still welcome you. Come on. You'll take us? I mean, yeah. like, it's like, you know, let's, let, if I'm, I'm, we're coming through these times, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, like, it's only <laughs> going up from here. That's how I feel. Yeah. Um, how long have you been a fan? Well, how many? How many? How many times are we gonna fumble a snap in this season? Like, do we not? Like, do we not know the rain at this point? Like, how many years has it been? Do you see my face? <laughs> mm-hmm. I can't. How- can't be screaming at my TV like. <laughs> um. How How many years have you been watching the Seahawks? Out of curiosity. Probably, I don't know. Probably like uh, twelve years, something like that. Oh, okay, 10. a long time. Yeah. So I always have a group text uh, with my dad and brother every week. And we say, I did, no joke, yeah. we could just watch the last two minutes of the game because <laughs> it, it nothing matters that happened in the three and a half other quarters except for the last two minutes of Seahawks game. <laughs> and I'm going to have a heart attack one day, win or lose, because I swear it always comes down. Like, it's, a, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. So, yeah. Um, but we'll stop talking about sports. But I do love that you are a sports fan. I love that you're a Seahawks fan. Um, if you ever get down here, you'll have to you'll have to let me know. We'll have to do a little touristing or whatever. Um, okay, back to Survivor. Um, let's see. What have we missed? Anything? I guess we. I mean, we didn't talk about the vote, but I think that it was. It always seemed to be pretty straightforward. I know they were saying Genevieve or Kyle, but. Like for me going into it, I didn't think that it was going to be a surprising tribal council. No, I mean, uh, definitely not. I, I I think it was like, it's it's interesting. Yeah, Teeny was really riding. I mean, do you want to talk about like who was kind of like, because Andy and uh, yeah. Rachel wanted to vote out Genevieve. Yeah, Andy's Which, big plan. Yeah. Andy's big plan, 6%, right? <laughs> <laughs> we can risk it, you guys, come on. Okay. And Rachel's just kind of like, well, let's just get out the best player, not like the biggest physical threat. Um, but then they, they got overruled by this new alliance. Um, yeah. You know, who, who do you think was right? Who would you have gone for? I, I think Genevieve is a bigger threat to win, like you already mentioned. But that also makes her a bigger target for the next three or four tribal councils. So I think it's best. It was best for Rachel and Andy to not push back on the larger Alliance because you are trying to continue to keep those relationships. So I think if that's what the group wants. It makes sense. You just do it. Genevieve is going to be a target next week. She's going to be a target the week after that. So yeah. unless she's winning immunities, which I don't know what the probability is on that. <laughs> Probably not 50%, six, whatever Andy's numbers are. Yeah. So I, I think Kyle was probably the right decision. I, I think so too. I mean, again, if you're not going to go with like voting out people who are going to take up a spot at the end, the other is, I think you take out Kyle because at least Genevieve is probably going to be eligible to go home. And again, I exactly full stomachs, hindsight, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's much easier, yeah. probably <laughs> way harder, probably in the moment. But it feels yeah. more obvious to me now. It's like, at least Kyle is good. He's probably going to have be immune a few more times. So it's going to be like, well, what do we do then? At least Genevieve's always going to be, almost always anyways, probably right. possible to be voted for. I do think too, the Genevieve, keeping Genevieve for, let's say someone like Rachel, I do think that Genevieve is a gamer. And so I think if you did want to navigate a little bit and target someone else, I think you have more room in someone like Genevieve because she'd be more willing to make a move like against somebody. Not that I don't know who you would make a move against because Genevieve is kind of the main person right now, but I just don't think with Kyle, like it'd be a little harder. 
Uh, yeah, I think not to talk about Kyle but is, is he is he kind of the Jeremiah? You know? Oh my god! <laughs> but yeah, I think Kyle is like not exactly. Yeah, you're gonna rob a bank, and you want yeah. Kyle to be like, give me your phone, right? You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Genevieve, she's she. It's like the town. You know what I mean? She's gonna be like pistol whipping people. She's gonna be doing all sorts of license to kill. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's like one of the Sopranos. Like she's not, yeah, let's go. Yeah. She is going to be a much easier person to another alternative plan. And then we never talked about Sam. Oh, Sam. Yeah. I guess I kind of, he's fallen a bit in the background for me. Um, I know he, he made some funny comments about like, wow, it's so weird when you actually tell the truth in the game, you can get further and how he was playing this very deceptive, crazy game in the beginning. And I don't really know. I guess Sam is just laying back at this point and just hoping to kind of like, he's like the Simpsons, like when he like goes into the bush and he's like, just don't see me here. Like, I'm just, I'm not, look at everybody else but me. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't really have a lot of thoughts on Sam, to be honest. So I'd love to hear what you think. Cause I don't, I don't have a, a lot to say about him. Yeah. I mean, Sam, he uh, is, uh, first of all, he's young. Right? Isn't he like 22, 23? Like, I don't know, is he age or something? I can't even believe it. Shocking. You know? Shocking. But I, it know. Also, I think it also is like when you're like just taller than everybody, then you're sometimes just like, you just assume that their person's old, you know? Yeah, true. Like in elementary school somehow, you know? Yeah. Um, but I feel like he's definitely like, even though it probably makes sense for him to almost like slide into the bushes, I feel like he's not. I feel like he's trying to get into it and like make moves and be a part of the game again. And it's just like, it's you, it's he's not even like branded as target, but he's just branded as like wild card, erratic, almost. You know what I mean? Is what it feels like um, that he's not really being brought into plans as much. But he's, I think, ready to go. Oh, right? he's ready to go. Yeah. I am confused though. Do you remember last week when I feel like he was the one who kind of brought together the people on the bottom because he had the the reward with Teeny? Was it Teeny and Andy? <laughs> that sucks. Can you imagine? You bring together an alliance and then they like start a new group chat without you. But don't you no, but, see, but don't you remember that last episode? I'm pretty sure it was him that was like, oh, okay. And then they brought in Teeny. It was Teeny and Andy and Rachel. Was it? I don't even remember this, but I believe you. I'm pretty sure. Huh? Unless am I just making stuff up? It's very possible. No, I'm I'm pretty sure. If I go back and look, and then that I was a little confused this week where he's just out. He's just out. Replace yeah. Sue. Sue and Caroline replaced him. He's done. Yeah, I mean, if I'm damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? It's also like, how's he not more of a, like his number one ally, you know, uh, is, is the first member of the jury. Like, you know, he's like got, like, he tried to save Saul at the last minute, you know, <laughs> when it was his turn. Like how, like in some ways people could look at him and be like, isn't this guy a threat for the end? And he's, he's really that like has come across like, so like a neuter almost at this yeah. point. Like, is there anybody who's ever come back from this? <laughs> I mean, I'm just curious. I almost think of like Jake from my season a little bit, but Jake was like way more like relentless in terms of like trying to shake stuff up. Um, Sam has a little bit more. I think he's at least like, uh, like I, Jake was like, I'd rather go home now than be dragged to the end. And I think Sam's like, well, like I, I wouldn't mind going a little bit further. <laughs> you know? I mean, you do get more money. <laughs> although, although I know he still wants to win. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's hard. It almost would take something like what Jake tried to do, which is like basically like a last minute, like idol play, flip everything, be kind of like try and like take a lot of credit for it. A la maybe like a, like a speech, like a Russell Hans or a Rick Devins uh, when you're giving up your idols, you know what I mean? And like just try and flip the perception that way. But it's, yeah, I, other than that, I don't really know what else he could do. But he doesn't have any. He doesn't have an idol. He doesn't have anything to shake up the game. All he has is himself. Isn't it crazy that Sue has an idol? Like, it's the most talked about. Okay, let's talk about this. What do, is, okay. Is she going to do some, is she even going to play it this season? I mean, or is she just going to sit on it until the end and be like, I didn't have to play it. But I, I feel like if you're Sue, who's probably not going to win, this is, these are the votes to start to think about how to use it. Agreed. She has to do something. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. But I just don't see a situation where she like needs to use it in a way that. 
she uses it. She'll need another one. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just don't, I, I don't know. And we haven't had any like electric type idle plays or advantage plays this season. Not well, have we? I mean, the, the Saul thing with Rachel, that, that's different though. Um, um, did Rome play? The Rachel shot in the dark, I guess, but. Shout out. People love that. I know they did. Um, that still plays. I know. <laughs> Wait. Okay. So as someone who had a shot in the dark moment, how did you feel about the negotiation last week? About them giving them up? You know, um, it's interesting because when you go into the game, like coming in, I was like, the shot in the dark is basically useless. You know what I mean? A little bit of like the group think of like, it's one in six. It's never been used correctly. Like, what are the odds that this will ever be impactful? Like, I was even to the point that coming in, I was like, why would I, why would we even split the vote and worry about it? Because it's just going to create more dissension amongst our people, you know? But when you, when you're out there, you look at it very differently because it's, it's such a minute chance of you even getting on the show and then you want to win. And it's like, are you really going to leave it up to chance that someone could do it? And then you start, now you're playing as if this person basically has an idol almost, you know what I mean? And you do that with everybody. So it's more of a factor in the game than I probably would have realized. And it was obviously cool to have the moment, but uh, the negotiation last week, I would say that uh, if you're in the majority, you want to get that out as quickly as possible. So that was, you know, I, that that's a great trade for them, for the people on the bottom. It's tough because it's the last bit of variability that can force people's hands to split votes, to do stuff that gives you more chances to be able to do things. Um, like I, so you feel bad for Sam, who's basically like, I'm so, <laughs> I, if yeah. I do this, I'm sorry, you know what I mean? Because yeah. that's for not getting right. Um, mm. And so, uh, you know, I, uh, I think it was a great trade for about, you know, half the people and for the other half, maybe it was probably a little bit more than half. Like Kyle probably could have used a shot in the dark, even though it was, it was his idea. He was so good about mm -hmm. his run. He was like, forget it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think, okay, never mind. I'm not going to say anything. Um, what? Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, I just don't think maybe Kyle thought about how he could have used it <laughs> properly. So that's why he was so quick to be like, just take the damn thing. I don't even know what, what to do with this. Like, yeah. oh, well, meanwhile, I, Sam's like, um, hello, yeah. <laughs> please yeah. don't. Yeah. I need it. Yeah. So uh, that, that, that's kind of how I feel. It's, uh, it's great for the majority and for the minority. It's not just the idea of playing it, but it's forcing other people because people will figure out if you don't have an idol after like one tribal council where you almost went home. So then yeah. it becomes, okay, like how can we, Split. And if they're splitting votes, then you need way less people to be able to pull in. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was just curious because I never played in a season with the shot in the dark. And, and like you, I always watch it as a viewer and I'm kind of like, eh, seems like a stupid thing to add to the game. But you make a good point that, yeah, when you're out there, it's a lot different. So I, I was kind of like, eh, they lost all their shot in the darks, whatever. But now that you're telling me, yeah, it's something you definitely think about and it changes the way you do votes. I, I understand that from that point of view. And so I think it was probably not a good negotiation. And no wonder Jeff was like salivating when they offered that up. He's like, are you fucking idiots? Like serious? Like <laughs> he was loving it. He was like, oh my God, his dumb asses. We got him. He loves the negotiation, which is hardly a negotiation, right? Like he's it's like, not. we're negotiating. This is my price. I will not change. He was like, okay, this gives us some bullets and board material for everyone else to know what to do. You know, come up with something yeah. more. Give us your flint. Give us this. Give us that. Like, what else can you do? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Next season, he's going to be like, who has idols? Give them to me. Like, oh, God. Let's not go there. <laughs> like, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. We'll have the oh. resort move over and be like, you got a kitchen. <laughs> <season."> you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we got to love Jeff. He is, he is a funny one. Isn't he? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Do you see his latest, uh, um, he's learning the piano. It looks like. Oh um, yeah, of course I did. I, I, yeah. I liked, so if anyone hasn't seen it, there is a guy, it started on TikTok. It moved to Instagram. There's a guy who creates little jingles, for different things. He did one about Survivor asking the question, how do you wear glasses on Survivor? It was very catchy, very cute. Mm -hmm. It caught fire, went viral. Uh, Survivor responded in the form of Jeff Propes returning the jingle. I thought it was creative, very fun, but it was, it was very long. 
it was like four minutes long and I started it and I was like, okay, Jeff, this is cute. And then I did the little dragged with my finger to see how long it was. And I was like three minutes and 48 seconds. Like I'm out. I didn't listen to the whole thing. So I, I didn't listen to the whole thing either. I did not know it was out, but it shows that survivors still got it. You know what I mean? It's like a thing that this, like this could pop off like that. Um, you know, people uh, who are worried about Jeff's retirement, it's like, come on, you know, this guy's at the height of his powers. It seems like. Right. He's doing fine. I always joked. I said, Jeff is not going to stop being on the show until they kick him off or he's going to be in like a little like rascal scooter. Like, like he's like, Jeff is not retiring from Survivor, y'all. Like he'll be like 95 season 842. And he is just like chilling. I think, uh, yeah, like to me, it's like I'm looking at Jeff and it's like when people are getting close to retirement, they're like, Oh, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to. It seems like he's more involved than ever. Like he's doing FaceTimes with everybody who's like in the casting process. He's like more involved there, more involved in like the the twist, like what's happening. It's like, you know, that's this is this is the and it's working as well. Like the show's just climbing, right? That you got to feel like, why would you walk away now? You know? Yeah. Why not? I feel like until the ratings tank. I mean, I think like the show was so popular when it first started. It was inevitably going to go down. I mean, I think it was like 60 million, 65 million. Some insane number of people watched the first season of Survivor. I mean, what show gets those kind of numbers? Totally. I, I don't, that's crazy. So it was going to go down, but it's been so steady for so long. And even people who drop off because they don't like the way the show is now, you have new people coming in. You have people who are showing their kids the show and, and it ends up on Netflix or Amazon Prime and new people start watching. So it's that's why you're constantly just you're going to get that that constant number. Um, so, yeah, I don't think it's going anywhere unless. Yeah, yeah I think it's going to continue on. Yeah. I always wonder, like, was 40 the last season? Will 50 be the last season? Because they have to end it on something magnificent. But I, I don't think 50 will be. I think it will keep going. I don't think 50 will be either. I'll be shocked yeah. if it was the last season. Same. Yeah. Yeah. Same. So I mean, we haven't talked about it. Did we cover we even cover Jeff at this point? Like, is there anyone else? I know. I feel like have we talked about everyone? Um, I think we did in terms of people playing. I think I mean we didn't really yeah, we did. I think enough. Um Kelly, yeah. did you get asked to go on the, the are you on the post game cruise? Uh the one that Sandra's putting together? Yeah, so I don't know who is. I saw Rome okay. and I was like, Rome got we're like, you know. Oh uh, wait, are you going? <laughs> no, I'm not going. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. The thought of going on a cruise, I've never been a cruise girl. So mm, yeah, not my thing. <laughs> not my thing. Yeah. But is Rome going to be like fishing for everyone and not sharing his food or I, that, was, which was a great moment. God, like that guy. <laughs> I mean, that's a plus. I mean, a, 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 a plus material for Asia. <laughs> Oh, poor Asia. Listen, wouldn't want to play with him. Loved the TV gold. It was great. Because uh, so the person who I would relate the most to would be like Bruce, you know, playing with him. And, um, you know, when you watch him, when I watched my season and he was on the original Blue Tribe, um, hilarious. He's doing the robot. He's doing the, like, you know, he's doing all <laughs> I'm like, oh, this guy is so <laughs> hilarious. He's so good, right? And then he goes to my camp. And I almost have like flashbacks. I'm like there. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and you're like rolling your eyes, and like I can't believe this. And then as soon as I got eliminated, I'm like, he's pretty funny again. You know, he's not running for scrolls for the option. He's not doing I'm like it's funny. Uh, so I, I I look and I I feel like probably people have maybe like some of the same sentiments um, looking back on Rome, who maybe played with them. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I guess we'll have to see how the post game interviews go. A lot is revealed after the game is over. So we'll yeah. see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I do feel bad for Roman, all the hate that he took online. Um, that's always tough, you know, but I think we always said we wanted more villains on survivor. So I feel like y'all can't have everything, um, you know, if you want villains, let them villain. If you, <laughs> if you did like, if you don't, don't hate on them. You know, unless it's like in a kind of like funny way, but yeah. So, so. yeah, you, it's been a good season though. You're doing something right. If you have some haters, you know, that's true. Are yeah. you a Cat Williams fan? Yes. You know that it was a while ago, a gosh, probably 10, 15 years ago. Now he had that one comedy special. that was like the funniest shit I'd ever seen. And a part of it was talking about how, like, yeah, if you don't have haters, what? I said the one where he was wearing the green suit. Yes. Yeah. 
<laughs> yes. And in, and in it, he was, ta- there was this one part where he talks about having haters and he's like, if you don't have haters and you're doing something wrong, feel free to send them my way because you need like 20 by the summer. It's just so funny. Cause it is like, you know what? It's kind of true. And the more you just embrace it. Yeah. Let it roll off your back. Well, you better off. You're going to be haters. Like let's right. Like you were, you beloved you death threats. Stop. For voting out Joe. Uh, you know what? Yeah. What happens yeah. The wrong side of somebody, but you're like, you know, like the, you know, uh, the, the, the comeback kid, you have the nullified votes thing. You uh, were like the underdog the whole time. People love an underdog. You, you want to be liked, just suck for the first part. And then people will love you if you can get out of it, you know? Caleb, sometimes. <laughs> I'm late to the you, wall, by the way. Sometimes, so. you, sometimes you say things like, wow, our tribe is so bad. We're like the Cleveland Browns of tribes. And then you get the entire state uh, for your head, coming for your head, okay? And I was like, didn't even remember I said it. And then you have people being like, well, joke's on you. We just got Odell Beckham, (laughs) haha. And I'm like, you realize this film nine months ago, right? Like you do realize, but it's okay. It's okay. So I survived that. I survived yeah. the Joe vote out. So I've, listen, I've made it out the other side. I survived edge of extinction. So really, I feel like I can do anything at this point. Yeah. You survived uh, uh, Lulu? Lulu. Lulu losers. Lulu? Lesu? Yeah. You know what? I uh, I did have, when we formed the tribe, just being a fan, you're kind of like, okay, Lesu sucked. And then Luzon from the brain. Oh, it sucked. oh God. <laughs> start with Lou. I was like, this isn't a good sign. And, uh. <laughs> What was funny about being on Lulu as well was that uh, Sabaya, in like the yeah. opening days, was giving us like pump up for the first challenge. Like, listen, I don't care how much bigger they are and smarter, oh. and better. Like, we stand it. Like, we can still like don't count yourself out. And it's like we're doing this before we lost anything. <laughs> so it's like we look at each other. <laughs> Brandon looked at me before the first challenge. He's like, so we're gonna lose this. <laughs> this is an immediate sign. We're done. And you guys were yellow, which is supposedly like the cursed color. Is that? I don't I'm know. sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, yellow this tribe is definitely, uh, this season is definitely more like emotionally unstable than they were like, they're all coming after each other versus yeah. they're semi strong. Yeah. Rachel- yeah. You guys were, you guys were just a mess. I'm sorry. Yeah. Ah. Caleb, y'all, y'all were a mess over there, but it's okay. Messes make for good TV. So that's what I, I always told my fellow lessus. As I said, listen, y'all, we may be in pain. We may be fucking horrible at everything, but we will get airtime. So, I mean, listen, that's the positive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's one of those things like uh, if you want a bunch of airtime, lose in the first episode. But do you really want to lose in the first? It's like it's a really bad idea in, in, in hindsight. You know what I mean? But it's not it's not a good strategy. Just yeah. win. Forget forget the airtime. You don't want it. No. Yeah, you don't want it. Get the money. Get the money. Um, Okay, cool. Well, is there anything else? I feel like I'm. I've talked about everything that I wanted to talk about. You've been so much fun. I appreciate you. Yeah, and uh, I hope that we can meet soon. We're only like three hours away, honestly, from each other. So we'll have to make it make it happen sometime. A hundred percent. I'll let you know next time I'm rolling through Seattle. You know, and uh, and we'll 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 do something. We'll grab a drink. Um, Yeah. No, it's been uh, it's been a fun time. You know, I felt like. uh, Oh, like I said, always, always a kindred spirit, you know what I mean? Um, and, uh, you know, very, uh, you know, honored to uh, be so, uh, you know, uh, happily accepted here uh, on, on the edge. You know? Yes, yeah. you are fully accepted. We are, we're besties now. We're good. <laughs> Thank you again. We'll talk to you soon. Cheers. Cheers.